All right, so we have uh, a fix to our issue in this video right here. If you haven't seen it already, I invite you to watch that one first. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step guide of how to build a super compact ITX PC. We had an issue with the power board. This is kind of like a Pico power board design. So uh, smaller than ITX basically means we have an external AC adapter and then an internal kind of power board that splits loads uh, to like the 24 pin, the 8 pin EPS. And uh, we pretty much ruled everything else out except for this board. So we assumed this board was dead. I contacted Antec. They were super quick to send another uh, board like this. And uh, yeah, I could have gone on Amazon. A few of you were saying to buy some Pico Power Supplies on Amazon, but a lot of those still had sketchy ratings. I'd rather go with Antex uh, just because they'll be quicker to respond if we need an RMA. So we're gonna install this and then put together the system again, but with one catch. And that catch is the Noctua L9A AM4 cooler. This is an ultra low profile cooler. So if you have a, you know, a very small case and you wanna fit something aftermarket in it, then I recommend going with this if you have an AM4 platform uh, to work with. So I expect this will be quieter than the stock like Wraith Stealth cooler that we're using here. This barely fit and we already had to take the, the outside shroud off so it kind of looks a little ugly. Um, so if anything, I hope it'll be just a bit quieter. And uh, if you know anything about Noctua, I'd say that's probably a fair estimation. So we're gonna get that rear IO shield back in there. This massive cables, what I want to do first is install the, the new power supply. I could test this all out of the system, uh, but again, this is something that I could remove without disassembling the rest of the system. So I, I don't think it's gonna be a big deal if we put this all back in there only to find out this board is also dead. And underneath you can see there's a lot of solder points that are pretty sharp and pretty long. So we wanna make sure that these aren't touching uh, the back of the case. So that's why this paper is in there for those wondering. Put it like that. And then drop the board in. This screw is so close to that inductor. Like, there's like no space between them. Hopefully that was again the only issue. And hopefully this board actually works. Uh, now the next thing I want to do, and this will be a very quick fix, we're going to swap out the stock AMD cooler, the Noctua NH L9A. This is really loud. So this is the uh, NHL 9A and it is actually surprisingly heavy. I thought part of this was just the box and accessories, but this cooler, I mean, this, this whole thing here, there's no back plate attached to it yet. This is extremely heavy. We also have our NTH1 thermal paste included in the Noctua kit, so we're gonna uh, throw this on there first. And then the way this installs, you actually have to install it from below. So we're going to lay this down flat. Uh, and then we're gonna put thermal paste. It's gonna be pretty sticky. We'll put some on the IHS. We'll flip it over and make sure that the standoffs on the back side align. And then we'll be able to thread the back plate on like so, and then screw it in from back here. So a bit of an unorthodox install, but uh, I, think it'll be, I think it'll be good. So there was a tiny clearance issue with uh, one of the DRM heat sinks. You can see this piece right here was just barely hitting. Uh, an actual cooler, so I've removed this. I'm not too worried about it though because we're still gonna have uh, active cooling of sorts. I mean, the, the, it's a top-down cooler, so um, I, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Mm. Okay, uh, I'll flip it over. Get it all lined up. Get the back plate ready to go. This is actually Super easy to install. Very impressed with this. Just make sure you read the manual because I definitely messed this up a couple times beforehand. And we can just slide this cable right there. Which one's CPU fan? Not this one. Okay. So it's actually super on the DL as well. Let's see, there's our entire platform. Looks great, actually. I, I really like the way this looks. So next step. We're going to install motherboard. Get all these cables out of the way. I kind of had to come come in like this last time, so I'm gonna give that another try. It's a tight squeeze for sure. Good gosh. There's like no clearance here. Oh, this is cringy. There we go. <laughs> And make sure it's sitting correctly. Show them how close 
the uh, the ITX board is to that power board. There is again no wasted space in this chassis. That's what kind of has me worried, but at the same time. I think it's super resourceful. All right, now we just gotta wire everything back up. Front IO connected, cable manage as we go. USB 2. Now where we're gonna stuff this cable, I don't know. Ooh, same thing, I have no idea where we're gonna put this cable. I don't even remember where I put it last time. 24 pin is next, it's right here. And we don't need the SATA power cables or molex because we're using an m.2 drive so we're gonna tuck those in tuck this in somehow <laughs> kind of push it all in here that's about all we can do let's just <laughs> let's just sandwich this thing on there i don't think we're gonna be able to do much more there we go and then just like last time nothing's changed four phillips screws to lock in uh both panels. This one really doesn't have much ventilation, but there is some, so that's worth noting. The sides, those have plenty of ventilation, and the top is pretty much totally mesh, which is really nice. It's plenty of airflow for our new Noxua cooler. And again, I am totally basing all of this on the uh, expectation that the new board is working fine. Let's, uh, let's power it up and see if it actually boots up this time. Okay. Booting up, we've got power. And uh, let's see, our Dr. Debug LED says we have just posted. That's awesome, but I'm going to double check. I'm gonna get the monitor out here and make sure that it actually is posting so I can get Windows 10 on here for Lisa's mama. Hey, there's the post. That's perfect. Now I'm gonna get my uh, boot tool with Windows 10 on it and we'll install Windows. Okay, so for installing Windows, I figured I'd cover that in this video because I didn't in the last one. You're going to need a USB drive. I just have a 32 gig drive. It's convenient because it's got USB uh, 3.0 on one side, just type A, and then we also have type C on the other side, so I can kind of flip it between either one depending on what's supported uh, with the board in question. Uh, but you're gonna wanna download uh, Windows 10, a Windows 10 ISO, preferably from the link in the video description. It's up top, it says how to install Windows 10. Uh, it's gonna take you to the Windows, the Microsoft Store, and uh, basically that UI will tell you to plug in a thumb drive and it will load all the necessary software onto the drive so it'll basically turn it into a boot device. And then you're gonna connect that to a PC and then whenever you go into your boot menu, because remember, there's no operating system on this drive right now that we have in the system, uh, you can have it uh, run setup. So we're gonna go to the BIOS with function F1. When you're in your BIOS for the first time, you might wanna configure XMP and a few other things. I'm gonna leave everything as stock. I don't want any conflicts with uh, uh, the PC for Lisa's mom. She's not gonna really, frankly, notice the difference between uh, overclocked memory and memory that's running. Uh, at a stock out of the box frequency. So I'm gonna leave it at 2400. I'm not gonna overclock the CPU at all. I'm not gonna touch any of that. I'm not even gonna touch the fan curve because that knocked to a cooler is super quiet as is. Uh, I'm just gonna show you how to boot into the, uh, the USB device because that has Windows 10 loaded on it. So in this case, it's an MSI motherboard. Click the settings button. Then you can come down here to the tab that says boot, click enter. Now you should see an option for USB key UEFI. It's really gonna depend on what your motherboard designates this as, but I'm gonna move this boot option up to number one. So the first thing it's gonna try to boot from is USB key. If there's nothing installed in this port, then it's gonna keep moving down the list until it finds something to boot into. Obviously there's nothing else in the system that has anything loaded on it, so it's gonna run through all of these and determine that nothing can uh, you know, there's no UI to boot into and it's just gonna throw you back into the BIOS more than likely. So we want UEFI USB key up top and then we're going to hit escape. We don't wanna quit without saving. Go up here to the top right, click the X button and you can see we changed our boot options to where USB key is up top. Click yes. Now when the system restarts, it should kick us right into uh, the Windows 10 loading screen and that will indicate that it's successfully booted from the USB drive. Let's see how this goes. Yep, that's a good sign. Okay, I'm gonna click next, install now. now. At this point, if you don't have a product key, you can click I don't have one. You'll still be able to load Windows 10. You'll still be able to boot in the operating system. That won't be an issue, but I recommend you 
uh, buy a key from some third-party website, preferably you can pay 20, 30 bucks and get a valid key and it'll last you pretty much the life of the device. So in this case, we'll click, I don't have a product key for now. And then we're gonna click next. Windows 10 Home is most common, except the license terms. Now at this point, I always choose the custom option because I, I wanna make sure I know where Windows 10 is being installed. So click that. Now you're gonna see the drives uh, in your system. And uh, the only drive we have is that a data M.2 drive. So you can see unallocated space. We confirm that it's about uh, half a terabyte, about 500 gigs or so. And uh, we can either create new or click next. It'll create a new volume for us. And Windows 10 will begin installing on that drive. All right, so when these uh, screens come up, just to prompt you to select your language and your keyboard and all that good jazz, just kind of churn through it, add a password if you want. Uh, you can also choose to accept the Cortana deal if you're into being super cringy. Uh, you can activate locations and device compatibility, all that good stuff. I typically turn all of this off, that's just me. So I'm gonna do that for the sake of uh, my mother-in-law and click accept. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna say, hello, we're happy you're here. Give it a few minutes. It's going to optimize the OS and then we should boot straight into the desktop and that's good to go. Last thing we need to do is buy a product key from somewhere to uh, activate Windows and uh, her mom will be all set. All right, so at this point, I'm just gonna optimize a few things. I'm gonna install uh, drivers for her PC, uh, get the Wi-Fi set up, again, activate Windows, and then I'm also gonna turn down the fan curve. It was pretty quiet in the BIOS, but now that we've booted in the OS, it seems like it's running at uh, pretty much max RPM. So I'm gonna turn that down as well, and then uh, package it back up, and hopefully it makes its way through TSA safely when Lisa returns back to Germany here next week. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping, I mean, the worst they could do, I guess, is just tear it down and do those little swabs they check for like drugs or whatever. Uh, but uh, that should be about the most invasive thing they do to the system. I'm assuming they'll let her board the plane with it as a carry-on. I definitely don't want her throwing this underneath the plane uh, with her general, I don't even think she's taking general luggage back because she'll be hopefully back here pretty soon. So uh, we'll see how all that goes. Uh, again, uh, we'd appreciate uh, best wishes and prayers for Lisa's travel, and uh, we'll be ready to go here with another video pretty soon. Um, we're also going to be live streaming again Sunday night, our after hours live stream as usual. If you guys want to hang out, ask some questions, just chat about whatever you guys want, that's why I'm there. Uh, it'll be an awesome time to hang out as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up. You know what to do. Thumbs down for the opposite feeling. You click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Become a member if you're feeling super fancy, and we'll catch you in the next one. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for building with us. Thank you.